If you clicked on this video, I'd like to imagine you already know what an iceberg image is and how this works, so I won't waste your time with 30 seconds of exposition. This is the Hollow Knight Iceberg, based off one of the most influential indie games of the last decade, and my personal pick for the greatest game of all time. It's a game of God's glory, and all the hidden lore and secrets one can dream about. I know Mossbag and Technovoid already made good videos on different Hollow Knight Icebergs, but I found this more expanded iceberg on Reddit and decided just to cover it since there's a lot of information here that was absent from the other icebergs. It covers everything from hidden lore, cut content, general facts about the game, and even some aspects of the fan base and developers. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, you've come to the right place. I've even added a few of my own entries I felt were missing. Also, if it wasn't obvious, this video contains spoilers for basically the entire game. Now, without further delay, let's dive into the Hollow Knight Iceberg. Hollow Knight is a Metroidvania. A Metroidvania is best described as a game that combines common design and gameplay elements found in classic Metroid and Castlevania games. These include maze-like interconnected world design, the consistent loop of gaining permanent upgrades to reach new areas and unlock shortcuts, backtracking, and a fair bit of explorative platforming that evolves as you gain new moves. Metroidvanias have become exceptionally popular due to the success of flagship titles like Super Metroid and Castlevania Symphony of the Night, and especially in recent years thanks to the genre's prevalence in the indie game scene. Anyone who's played Hollow Knight can recognize that this game fits the description of Metroidvania to a T. Hornet lines. Many characters in Hollow Knight have voice acting that just amounts to gibberish. Hornet's voice lines are some of the most well-known in the game, with classics such as The last one in particular has become a big meme as it sounds like Hornet is saying get good, which has been a popular saying among Souls games fans for years. Free DLCs. Throughout Hollow Knight's first and eventually pushing into the second year of release, the game would get plenty of post-launch content in the form of free DLCs. The first of these DLCs was the Hidden Dreams expansion, released on August 3rd, 2017. Hidden Dreams was the smallest of these content packs, including only two new bosses and a fast travel mechanic. That said, the new bosses progressively got more difficult the more the player refought them, making them a refreshing challenge to players who've already reached the endgame by this point. The Grim Troop, the second and objective best of these packs, was released on October 26, 2017, just in time for the Halloween season. Fittingly, the new quest featured in this expansion was very dark from a lore perspective, and it featured one unique boss with an insane dream a rather nightmare variant. Lifeblood came out on April 30th, 2018, and was more of an optimization patch that helped Hollow Knight run on the then-upcoming Switch version. Even just a simple patch that wasn't considered a new expansion was good enough to get a brand new boss fight, and a completely revamped old boss fight. The final DLC, Godmaster capped off Hollow Knight's incredible DLC lineup on August 23rd, 2018, with the biggest post-launch expansion yet. Godmaster added a whopping seven new bosses, challenges that allowed you to rematch old bosses, and all around brought some great quality of life improvements. Honestly, the fact that all of this DLC was, and is free to this day, speaks volumes for how much Team Cherry really cares about its fans. Insects. A common theme in Hollow Knight is that most of the NPCs and enemies take the form of different insects or other bug-like creatures. There are exceptions, of course, like the jellyfish in Fog Canyon or wh whatever the hell the collector is, but this theme holds for most of the game. Hollow Knight Silk Song. This is Team Cherry's next big project that is to be set in the Hollow Knight universe, with Hornet as the main playable character. We've received a few gameplay trailers at the time of writing this, but no news on when it'll actually release. Silk Song when? Yes, yeah, good question. 
Another sort of in-joke well-known even among people who don't spend a lot of time in the fanbase, Silksong When refers to the burning question of when Hollow Knight Silksong will actually come out. After the initial trailer released in 2019, we've gotten very minimal updates about this game's progress or when it is likely to come out, at least at the time of writing this. Man, that would, that would really be horrible if this section became outdated by the time this video comes out, right guys? Team Cherry. I know I've dropped this name in the video already, but if you couldn't tell, Team Cherry is the team that made Hollow Knight. It consisted of four talented individuals at the time of Hollow Knight's release. Ari Gibson, William Pellin, Jack Vine, and David Causey. With Christopher Larkin and Matthew Griffin working as contractors for the music and marketing respectively. David Causey would leave Team Cherry in 2017, leaving Gibson, Pellin, and Vine as the three sole members currently. Hollow Knight is the only game officially published under the Team Cherry name so far, and it was a damn good start for getting their name out there. R slash Hollow Knight. This is the go-to subreddit for discussing Hollow Knight. It's sitting at around 350k members at the time of making this, a subtle reference to the fact that Hollow Knight is a popular video game. R slash Hollow Knight memes. This is the go-to subreddit for Hollow Knight memes and shitpost. Whereas R slash Hollow Knight is typically more based on serious matters such as game discussion and sharing art, R slash Hollow Knight memes is more about the in-joke and shitposting side of the community. Though that isn't to say that it doesn't occasionally bleed into the main subreddit. Primal Aspid Bad. Speaking of in-jokes, one Hollow Knight opinion that unifies every race, religion, nationality, political stance, etc. is the fact that Primal Aspids are annoying bastards to fight. It's not a super complex enemy to fight as it's basically just a bee that shoots in three directions, but the way a lot of these things are placed in dangerous areas as well as their ability to catch you off guard with their projectiles range and spread makes them a new in many people's eyes. It's such a big meme that I've seen several pieces of fan art depicting a primal aspid based boss that people claim would be the hardest boss in the game. Mossbag. Mossbag is a popular Hollow Knight content creator known both for his memes and analysis videos revolving around the story of Hollow Knight. If you're interested in Hollow Knight, you're probably already very familiar with him, so there's not too much to say other than he makes good ass content explaining the lore of the game. Pogo Jumping. This is an unofficially named yet universally adopted tactic where the player nail slashes in order to bounce off enemies in certain hazards. It's not all that difficult to do with most enemies and is even encouraged at many points throughout the game. This technique was clearly named after Scrooge McDuck's Pogo Jump in the DuckTales games and it's just a fun mechanic and every game with a melee weapon is now required to have this. Bopinata. Every time you enter a Zelda's shop and interact with her, you are greeted with the most beautiful of sounds. <sighs> Bopinata. People have joked about how there's apparently some hidden meaning in this voice line, but spoilers, it's just cute and people like it. Pantheon of Hollow Nest. The final expansion of Hollow Knight, Godmaster, contains several pantheons which serve as segmented boss rushes that the player must overcome to witness all the content that the expansion has to offer. The pantheon of Hollow Nest is different, however, in that it contains the strongest variant of every boss in the game. You have plenty of opportunities to heal in between fights, but one loss sends you all the way back to the beginning. The endurance test of fighting every boss culminating in the final showdown with the Absolute Radiance, arguably the hardest boss in the game, makes it easy to see why many people consider this to be the hardest challenge in the game. No wonder only 3% have the achievement on Steam. Though here's the tip if you're struggling with this pantheon, you can actually fight the Absolute Radiance in the Hall of Gods after you initially reach it in the pantheon. That way you can go practice the fight to your heart's content before you throw 40 minutes down the drain for another go. I gave this guy a good 15 practice runs before attempting the Pantheon again, and got him first try once I did, so I'd say it's a pretty helpful tip. 
And if you happen to die to him, your controller is right there. Hornet is not void. The theory that Hornet is void grew to become a hotly debated topic in the early days of Hollow Knight speculation, to the point where the concept of this theory just became a meme. It might seem believable if you're new to Hollow Knight's lore, as Hornet and the Knight look kinda similar and wear a similar mask. But there's strong evidence to suggest that Hornet's relation to the Pale King doesn't mean she's made of void, such as how she treats the Knight as an otherworldly being, as opposed to something she understands, or other specific bits of dialogue that suggest the contrary. And if you don't want to even get that far into it, Hornet's very conception from the Pale King and Hera the Beast, as opposed to being conceived from the Pale King and the White Lady like all the other vessels, builds a strong case that Hornet is not like the vessels, i.e. she's not made of void. I won't dive too far into this as it's its own mini rabbit hole, and Funny Man Mossbag made a good video that goes into depth with this theory. Who knows though, this is all just theory and maybe Silksong will make everyone eat their words by proving Hornet is 100% void when you finally get the secret ending for killing Primal Radiance. Christopher Larkin as previously mentioned, Christopher Larkin is responsible for Hollow Knight's soundtrack. He's pretty good. Path of Pain This is a secret area that was added in the Grim Troop expansion that you can reach via breakable wall in the White Palace. It's a really hard, platforming, buzzsaw, hellfuck nightmare that rewards you with a little bit of vague lore upon completion. Something tells me only masochists thought this was worth it. The Delicate Flower Quest This is an infamous quest that can be accepted from the Grey Mourner found in the Resting Grounds. Despite being able to reach the Mourner as soon as you learn Desolate Dive, you must reach the Queen's Gardens in order to complete the quest, which makes it much better saved for later, barring the sheer difficulty. The goal is simple, deliver the flower given by the Mourner to the grave of her lover. Since this grave is in the Queen's Gardens and the quest must be accepted from the rest grounds, you must trek across the entire map of Hollow Nest in order to make this delivery, and using any form of fast travel or taking any damage will result in the flower being destroyed, and you having to go all the way back to the resting grounds to accept the quest again. You can reset the quest by going back any number of times, so you can't fail it permanently, but being forced to lose so much progress from one minor slip up can make this quest absolutely punishing. Completing the quest gives you a mask shard, achievement on steam, and a precious loss of sanity you'll never recover. Millibel is a thief. Millibel is a merchant NPC found in Fog Canyon near the Queen Station. She provides a banking service to where you could store Geo for a small fee. This seems like it'd be a harmless mechanic for players who don't want to lose their savings in an upcoming difficult area, but don't let this bitch fool you. Giving Millibel enough Geo causes her to run off with all of your money the next time you try to visit her standard location. This comes as a shock to many new players they've effectively been trolled by Team Cherry, but don't worry, you can go to the Pleasure House in the City of Tears and give her a good smackin'. Marissa Marissa is the spirit of a butterfly who was once a songstress for the City of Tears. She doesn't do a whole lot in-game besides briefly explain her past and plays a song for the player if they stop to listen, but it's kind of just a hidden sweet yet sad moment of the knight giving her an audience she hasn't seen in so long. Mr. Mushroom. This is a strange NPC that can be found in a manner of different locations throughout Hollow Nest. He speaks pure gibberish until you equip the Spore Shroom charm, in which he speaks more gibberish but in English this time. Strangely enough, he always seems to be conversing with some unknown being, in which it's never really hinted at who or what he could be talking to. Speaking with him at each location will cause him to move to another until you finally confirm confront him at King's Pass, and he acknowledges the player following him. Finishing the game normally after this encounter rewards the player with a secret cutscene. Coliseum of Fools 
This is an optional challenge that can be found at the edge of Hollow Nest that consists of three different enemy gauntlets that reward you with Geo upon completing each one. Some enemies here can't be found anywhere else in the game, so you'll need to persevere if you want to finish the Hunter's Journal. Interestingly enough, the Hunter's Journal actually explains these enemies' exclusivity in that those who run the Colosseum specifically breed these creatures to give challengers stronger variants of enemies that can be found in the wild. Oh yeah, th that's Lord Fool on the throne. The guy who initially watched these matches. He's, he's dead, and his corpse is still sitting there. Banishing the Grim Troop Playing through the Grim Troop quest doesn't offer much in terms of diversion as you mostly just go around killing Grimkin to collect their flames. That is, until the very final wave of Grimkin are revealed, in which one of the flames guides the player to Brum in Deep Nest. Talking to Brum reveals that he's aware of how the ritual repeats endlessly and is no more than a slave to the troop and that he would like the player to make the choice to break the cycle by going back where it all began. This is where the quest branches into two different paths. You can either continue your original goal by collecting the remaining flames to fight Nightmare King Grimm and complete the ritual, or you can follow Brum's advice and banish the ritual in the area where you activated the quest. Both of these endings ultimately remove the troop from Hollow Nest, but they differ in what gets left behind. Banishing the ritual causes a new NPC named Nim to show up in Dirtmouth, and upon talking to him, he explains how he doesn't remember where he's from or why he came to Hollow Nest. He'll give you the carefree melody charm for listening to him, and permanently takes residence in Dirtmouth while he continuously plays the Dirtmouth theme on his accordion. While nothing is really confirmed about Nim since his dialogue is very brief, it's not hard to notice the overwhelming similarities to the very bug that convinced you to choose this path. Suspicious timing is one thing, but like, come on guys. Mender bug. If you destroy the sign at the entrance of Forgotten Crossroads, there's a 2% chance every time you enter the room that the Mender bug will be fixing the sign you destroyed. He flies away almost instantly when noticing you, but entering with a desolate dive or timing the swing of your nail just as you approach the ground will kill him, and rewards you with a secret entry in the Hunter's Journal. Killing the Mender bug also gives you access to his house, which is found in the area where you initially meet Sly. Here you can find the Mender Bug's diary. His entries mention how he enjoys his life of fixing signs, and how he notices the sign at the entrance always being destroyed, yet he treasures the opportunity to fix it each time. He also mentions a bug by the name of Mender Berry, who he likes and wants to spend his life with. But that's not happening because you killed him. And the, the sign will never be fixed again just to further remind you of the sins you committed. Embrace the void ending with flower. If you're still holding on to the delicate flower, you're able to give the flower to the Godseeker for a slightly altered ending after completing the Pantheon of Hollow Nest. For the most part, the ending plays out exactly like the traditional Embrace the Void. The knight takes the form of a massive abyss monster to beat the shit out of the Absolute Radiance, but it differs in that the Godseeker is now holding the delicate flower as she becomes corrupted by the Void. In the regular variant of this ending, the Void becomes too much for the God seeker to handle, only to seemingly escape as it can't be contained any longer. In the flower variant, the god seeker still ends up succumbing to the void, but the flower seems to stop the void before it can spread any further. I find this to be the most satisfying ending in Hollow Knight, as both the god seeker and the knight itself achieve their respective goals without putting an end to Hollow Nest itself. It also has no apparent effects on that local trout population. The 57 Precepts of Zote. Talking to Zote in Dirtmouth after he returns from the Colosseum triggers dialogue in which he recites his famed 57 precepts. Some of these include, always win your battles, don't let them laugh at you, always be rested, strength beats strength, 
and if you try, succeed. I'm sure I could spend forever analyzing each one of these and how it displays Zote's character, but I'm sure you already get the picture. Amid these are more strange precepts relating to things seemingly unknown about Zote, such as mothers will always betray you, or seek truth in darkness. But you can't find much as Zote won't even explain these. Cranky Templar. This is a YouTuber that is mostly known for uploading gameplay of crazy difficult boss mods for Hollow Knight. This community is genuinely filled with masochists. There's no other way to explain this. Torture. Relia. This YouTuber mainly does walkthroughs of different games, with Hollow Knight content easily dominating as his most popular videos. Many of these walkthroughs give detailed explanations about where specific items are hidden in the game, or offer strategies for beating certain challenges. With the map being as big as it is, and the difficulty being absurdly high for some of the side content, I'm sure many people found these guides helpful for 100% completion r slash hollow knight r34 if it exists there's porn of it the famed universal rule 34 of the internet especially so on reddit like god 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 damn it charm combos certain combinations of equipable charms can lead to interesting effects for example Fluke Nest normally causes your Vengeful Spirit spell to summon a bunch of damaging flukes, but adding the Defender's Crest on top of that summons a giant exploding fluke that leaves lingering gas. Or how using Fury of the Fallen with unbreakable strength and Grubberfly's Elegy turns your shockwaves red to represent the massive increase in damage. There are loads of unique combos like this, and it really makes experimenting with different charms a lot more rewarding. Rusty. A YouTuber that started making videos on dark secrets in video games, Rusty now primarily focuses on Soulsborne and Hollow Knight content. His Hollow Knight boss rankings in particular garnered a lot of attention, though that isn't to say his other stuff doesn't pull in respectable audience. Fireborn. A Hollow Knight speedrunner and YouTuber in a similar vein to Cranky Templar, except he does different insane shit that falls under the speedrun slash challenge run categories. Interestingly enough, he would start his channel by uploading classical music over a decade ago. He'd upload his first Hollow Knight speedrun only a couple months after the game's initial release, and well, the rest is history. Parry attack. While not an explicitly explained mechanic in-game, you're actually able to parry any attack followed by a white trailing with your standard nail swing. This gives you a split second of invulnerability and can even land an extra hit on the enemy if positioned right. It's not required to complete any challenges in this game, but it provides for some great ear candy. Hollowknight.fandom.com. Now, as Rule 35 states, if it exists, there's a wiki for it. Almost any information about this game you could want can be found on the wiki, and it really helped me making this video, by the way, so thanks, guys. Silk Song was supposed to be DLC. The reward for one of Hollow Knight's Kickstarter goals was adding a second playable character into the game. Upon being reached, Team Cherry announced a planned DLC campaign that featured playable Hornet, who was previously a boss slash NPC in the base game. Time went on without a word of this campaign, but on February 14th, 2019, they revealed they had so many new ideas that they just decided to make a full-fledged sequel instead. The Eternal Ordeal. This is a secret challenge accessed through a hidden breakable barrier in the Hall of Gods that's about killing as many Zotitious creatures as possible as they spawn in endless waves. Killing 57 enemies in one run, likely alluding to Zote's 57 precepts, unlocks a new main menu with an incredible new menu theme. Na, 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 na. <laughs> if 
effects of the infection on a body. As described and shown in-game, the bodies of bugs and creatures consumed by the infection tend to seep orange fluid and appear bloated. Depending on how far the infection has progressed, some bugs explode damaging toxins upon being defeated, likely the result of all the infectious gases that have built up in their body. What infected beings lose in mental capacity, they more than make up for in their disturbingly swollen bodies and ability to cause damage if you aren't careful. The Rain and City of Tears As Hollow Nest seemingly takes place underground, it may confuse some players as to why it rains in the City of Tears. Exploring the kingdom further will lead you to a lake found right above the city, so it isn't difficult to then piece together that the water seeps through the cracks under the lake and creates the illusion of constant rain in the City of Tears. In the words of the wider scientific community, that's pretty sick. Hollow Point mod. Did you ever think a nail was kind of a lame weapon and just wanted to use an AK-47 to play through the game instead? Well, the Hollow Knight mod community's got you. This seems like a simple gag mod and nothing else at first, but the creator put a surprising amount of nuance when it came to handling other mechanics, such as adding a class system that can change up your spells, as well as a new adrenaline mechanic that rewards aggressive play. Hungry Knight. This is William Pellin's cult classic released on Newgrounds back in 2014. You play as a knight practically identical in design to the one we know today, and go on a quest to eat food before your hunger meter runs out. If the art direction and character design alone didn't scream Team Cherry, the basic combat loop of swinging your nail and dashing around also feels like a base outline for what would become Hollow Knight's gameplay. Ancient Civilization. This refers to the society of bugs that resided before Hollow Nest was established. Very little is known about this civilization other than the fact that they worshipped the Void and mainly resided in the Abyss. Despite being long gone, many artifacts and structures of this civilization can be found throughout the game, which include the Soul Totems and Arcane Eggs. It can also be speculated that some of the large bug corpses scattered throughout the kingdom can be connected to the civilization, since they appear far bigger than any living creature you find in-game. The Moth Tribe Scattered throughout Hollow Nest are remnants of the Moth Tribe, the original worshippers of the Radiance. The Moth Tribe created the Dream Nail to master the art of entering and manipulating one's subconscious. When the Pale King arrived in Hollow Nest, the Moth Tribe turned to worship him as the influence of the Radiance slowly faded into obscurity. Outraged by this, the Radiance began to appear in Bug's dreams and would cause them to revert to their primal instincts, acting as a source of what would be known as the Infection. The Kingdom-wide plague is what sets the stage for the main game, and the Seer is the only living member of the Moth Tribe that remains. The Matpat Controversy Oh lord, here we go. I'm sure I don't need to explain who Matthew Game Theory Patrick is and the massive success of his channel, but did you know that he made a theory about Hollow Knight in 2019? It wasn't good. Everyone got their lawyers, and he was history. Did you know that the knight you play as is the Pale King? Matt, Matt Pat said it, not me. Even though basically every line of code in the game pokes holes all over this idea, and he blatantly ignores so much evidence that proves him wrong. Of course with the video getting a lot of attention because it's game theory, Mossbag made a good 40 minute debunking of it. Overall, a lot of comments on MatPat's video were just people clowning on him, and the theory in general is just seen as a big joke for how much crucial evidence it ignores. Even just looking at the top comments, it's pretty easy to see that this is one of MatPat's least popular theories. 
what Grub Father truly does with the grubs. When the player returns all of the captured grubs to the Grub Father, Grub Father can be found in the center of his room with all of the grubs in his stomach. Upon first glance, you may feel regret for rescuing all the grubs and think he's a monster that eats his own children. But reading the item description for the Grubber Flies Elegy reveals that this is all part of a process for the grubs to move on to the next phase of their lives, so they'll probably turn into butterflies or some other frightening insect. Vitruvian Grub. There's this strange drawing that can be found in a secret room located in the Tower of Love. Details about this art aren't mentioned anywhere in the game, but considering the collector that resides here primarily enslaves grubs, there's a possibility that the collector somehow saw them as higher beings. This drawing seems like it could have been for some sort of ritual, or potentially some sort of result of the collector studying the grubs. Von Jog Vlog. This is a relatively small YouTuber that gained notoriety when he reviewed Hollow Knight in a video titled Hollow Knight Sucks. He straight up admits that he only played a bit into the first area and just felt bored with the game, yet decided to give it a bad review score regardless of seeing nothing the game has to offer. He also made a video claiming Hollow Knight steals ideas from Ori and the Will of the Wisps, even though the latter game came out after Hollow Knight- yeah, this is obviously bait. Divine Eats Leg Eater. Using Divine to upgrade all of your fragile charms and then returning to Leg Eater in the Fungal Wastes, with at least one of these upgraded charms equipped, causes him to notice the smell on the charm and leave his camp in search of the source. Returning to Divine's tent so long as the Grim Troop is still present in Dirtmouth, you can find Leg Eater's claws lying on the ground. She ate him and enjoyed it a lot. But considering this is how Mantis's mate, I guess this is what he wanted. Keith Redacted. I make Hollow Knight videos that are kind of like guides that. Oops, never mind, there goes a shit post. Keith, Abyss Creature. In the room containing the Lifeblood Core Charm and behind the blue door in God Home, if you look into the background, you can catch a glimpse of a giant black beast with several blue eyes. The beast never leaves the background or does anything, and you can't interact with it in any meaningful way. All that's known is that it's called Abyss Creature in the game's files. Anonymous Shade. She is an indie game enthusiast that gained decent notoriety for her Hollow Knight shit posts on YouTube. She doesn't really have a set style of content, more so she just does whatever and talks about the things she finds interesting, which I gotta respect and also relate. Have you seen the last time I uploaded? Monstaller. A Hollow Knight speedrunner since 2017 who does runs under many different categories. Similarly to Fireborn, Monstaller started speedrunning only a few months after Hollow Knight's release and continues to run the game to this day. Willow's Secret Willow is an NPC found at the Queen Station eating fungi from the ceiling. She doesn't do all that much throughout the game and just seems like a sweet character, until you get the monarch wings and jump up to the area she eats from. This reveals a hidden platform with a corpse that reads, Please, not food when dream nailed. Using the dream nail on Willow herself shows that she's thinking about eating the night, but compares it to how bland the other bugs taste. Additionally, I found a comment that mentioned how the stag station sign right before this room could be used to lure unsuspecting bugs into her camp. While this sign could have just been there coincidentally, as the station had multiple stagways in the kingdom's prime, the thought of Willow specifically choosing Using an area with a sign still pointing to it adds a whole darker layer to the lengths she'll go to catch prey. Hollow Knight's influence on Ori and the Will of the Wisps. With the release of Ori and the Will of the Wisps, many people have speculated whether specific mechanics in that game were a result of taking inspiration from Hollow Knight. Players notice similarities in the charm equipping mechanics present in both games, healing that expends a resource and leaves you vulnerable, similar to that of Hollow Knight, and in general, a more combat-heavy focus in the gameplay. Though a lot of these comparisons were clear as day, it's important to note 
that many of these general concepts existed long before Hollow Knight, with that game alone citing numerous sources of inspiration. The question is rather, did Ori take these ideas because Hollow Knight did them, or did it just take inspiration from similar sources as Hollow Knight? Moon Studios director Thomas Mahler went on record stating that he in fact didn't take any ideas from Hollow Knight, but that they were directly inspired from other sources. Wanderer's Journal Named after an item found in-game, this book came out alongside Hollow Knight's physical release and details the chronicles of a character named Elena as she explores the remnants of Hollow Nest. Authors Carrie Fry and Ryan Novak worked closely with Team Cherry to ensure the lore remained faithful to the game. That said, they took the liberty to add a few new details that further explore Hollow Knight's lore. Nothing I could see being crucial to a future game's plot, but a nice supplementary side story for those interested in Hollow Nest. Hollow Knight's similarities with Dark Souls slash Bloodborne. It's no secret that Hollow Knight takes heavy inspiration from From Software's Soulsborne titles, and I'm sure you can make a whole video pointing out all these similarities, but I'll just list off a few that stuck out to me. The setting of a fallen kingdom, losing all your money slash souls upon death, having the chance to gain back your lost money slash souls if you reach the area where you initially died without dying again, characters in these worlds going insane, overly ambitious king, boss fight similarities such as between the Watcher Knights and Abyss Watchers, interconnected worlds, is hard, parrying, lore told through item descriptions and tablets, the Abyss, shitty garbage bed of chaos fi- oh wait no, Hollow Knight's good and doesn't do that. I could go on, but this paints a pretty good picture as to how deep the influence runs. The Hollow Knight slash Pure Vessels cut dialogue. While you can't use the Dream Nail on the Hollow Knight in the final game, cut dialogue exists for what was meant to display if you Dream Nail the Hollow Knight. Some of these include Kill, This Vessel, Broken, Fails, or Dawn, Shall Break. While most of these lines sound like they would come from the radiance from within the vessel, the line, Father, comes off as particularly unique, for it's the only real dialogue the Hollow Knight itself would have had, and hints at its feelings towards the Pale King caused it to fail in containing the radiance, for it wasn't completely hollow. Tomb Cat Another one of Team Cherry's early Flash game projects, this one was made within 72 hours for an indie game development speedrun. It's a basic platformer that has the player collect coins within a set time limit. Similarly to Hungry Knight, very trace amounts of Hollow Knight's DNA can be seen here. The platforming and wall jump aren't far off from what would be implemented in Hollow Knight, and the character designs still feel fitting to Team Cherry's distinct style, and something tells me they really like insects. Spider Mage this is a cut enemy that appears to be a variant of the Weavers seen in the final game. All we have of this enemy is a gift Team Cherry provided in 2015, when Hollow Knight was gonna be on... the Wii U? Astaroth. And here we have another Hollow Knight content creator, with no real pattern to their content. Glitches, secrets, specific charm combo showcases, memes, telling us how to deal with our own problems, and so on. Ancient Nailsmith. The corpse of a nailsmith looking bug can be found in a hidden area in Kingdom's Edge, hunched over an anvil. Said anvil is labeled Nailsmith underscore Ancient in the game's files. On the anvil rests the Quick Slash charm, its item description claiming that it's a result of the fused defective nails as the nailsmith attempts to fuse a perfectly pure nail. Dream nailing the corpse reveals the text, Pure which could suggest that the pure nail was successfully created, though that nail is nowhere to be found. Huge Mushroom Located in the lower fungal wastes within the fungal core is a massive mushroom that appears to be devoid of any life. Dream nailing the mushroom gives the text, Pale Worm, what good to foresee a demise unavoidable. If the size befitting the other ancient corpses wasn't evidence enough, 
This text further indicates that this mushroom must have been alive during the era of the worms, before the bugs of Hollow Nest, and that it had some sort of connection with the Pale King. It's known that the Pale King took its bug-like form after it died as a worm, so the mention of foresight and a demise could hint that this Pale Worm planned its death in Kingdom's Edge long before it transpired. Fungal Waste's Locked Door There's a large door located in the upper right-hand corner of the Fungal Wastes area map that takes the player to the lift that ascends into the Forgotten Crossroads. Or at least it would take the player to the lift if it were actually possible to open. Even after receiving many updates and expansions since release, Team Cherry never gave us a key or any method of opening this potential shortcut. It could have been meant to just be a decoration to get players' hopes up, but I can't help but feel the perfect placement in between two distant areas meant that they had plans to use the door but may have forgot about it or just scrapped the idea. Either way, it sticks out like a sore thumb compared to every other environmental detail in the game, and it's a curious case as to why it served no purpose. Giant Geo Deposit. Opening up a hidden breakable wall in the Kingdom's Edge takes you down a series of passageways that, when Desolate dived through all of the fragile grounds, leads to a massive rock containing Geo. This can be broken with a few nail slashes like any other Geo deposit in the game, and will net you a total of 420 Geo. Grim Secret Room if you pass the arena where you first fight Grimm, double jumping in the center of the second arch in the following hallway reveals a hidden vertical passage that takes you to a hidden room at the top of the tent. You won't find anything of interest here, and there isn't any known Dream Nail dialogue that gives you any context to this place. It's definitely bizarre seeing all the lifeless masks in the background, and the unclear purpose of this room only adds to the strangeness. Does this imply that the Grimm Kin cheering in the background are just puppets, and that they're somehow being manipulated to act like they're alive? Are these just masks pried off of Grimkin that were killed for not obeying Grim? Or maybe it's just Grim's dressing room, I don't know. Hollow Knight Reference in Dead Cells Dead Cells is no stranger to referencing and taking influence from other games, and Hollow Knight certainly isn't an exception. When entering an alchemy room with insects on the wall, take a closer look and you'll see our favorite pogo-bouncing knight make a cameo in the form of an easter egg. Dead Cells lore also goes on to state that insects help spread the malaise infection, which could be drawn as a parallel to Hollow Knight's story about insects spreading and suffering an infection, though this one is much more of a loose observation and could be a coincidence. For a final reference piece in this Hollow Knight shaped puzzle, Dead Cells Everyone Is Here update added several new weapons, one of which includes the knight's classic nail equipped with its signature pogo bounce. Shrine of Believers and Unnamed Moth Within the spirit's glade in the resting grounds, the top ledge of a waterfall can be scaled to find a hidden room. The room is peculiar enough with looming moth statues, but using the dream nail on the ledge in the left corner of the room peels back another layer of mystery, as it will send you to a hidden dream realm. Here you will encounter an unnamed moth NPC, who gives you the message, you who pry into even the most hidden dreams, take heed. Recorded within this shrine are utterings from another world. To the minds of higher beings alone, this means that Kickstarter backers who donated $75 or more got to etch their name in a message on a tablet. Quarrel Comic this was a short comic released alongside Hollow Knight that serves as a prequel to the game's events by briefly outlining Quirrell's journey to Hollow Nest before the player would canonically start their journey. Upon pondering the reasons of what draws him to this lost kingdom, he befriends a character never seen in-game named Boone, who provides food and a place to rest for the adventurous Quirrell. The comic ends with Quirrell encountering Hornet in a short clash before scaling the cliffs and seeing the dead kingdom ahead, in the same spot the knight stands in the opening cinematic of Hollow Knight. Despite being labeled as a first chapter, no other chapters of this comic have been released at the time of writing this. 
Land of Storms. This is a secret area that can be accessed from God Home once you complete every binding on each of the five pantheons. These bindings can be done in separate runs of the pantheon, so you don't have to do them all at once for it to count. Once the requirement has been met, drop down to the left of the peak that hosts the pantheon of Hollow Nest, and you should see a glowing crack in the wall that will take you to the Land of Storms. The Land of Storms is a very small sub-area, with broken pillars and other large silhouettes in the background. You'll traverse a linear path that leads into a cave, to where you can then find and pick up the weathered mask item. The Hunter's Journal entry for this item reads as follows, Gods of Thunder, Gods of Rain, why forsake thy servants? Will our minds be left suffering, to ache alone? What god remains to deliver us from this woeful silence? Lament of the God Seekers. Thank you, that just explains everything. There are never any Gods of Thunder or Gods of Rain mentioned elsewhere in the game, so it seems like these divine beings are currently unknown to us. Picking up the Weathered Mask prevents the player from ever entering the Land of Storms again on their current save, so enjoy the ambience while you're there. Team Cherry's AMA on Reddit, or more accurately, Team Cherry's AMAs, as they hosted one in 2017 on r slash gaming, and the other in 2018 on r slash Nintendo Switch, following the Nintendo Switch release of the game. I'll leave the links to both of these down in the description, but I'll summarize some of the key points and interesting takeaways. The first AMA revealed that Team Cherry adored the simple yet tricky nature of the Primal Aspid, and actually planned a boss fight based on the enemy. They also expressed interest in a boss rush mode, which would go on to take the form of the Pantheons in the Godmaster update. Someone also suggested that all three Mantis Lords should attack the player at once, which aged hilariously well considering how little notoriety this comment got. Other bits of trivia dropped were the possibility of a Zelda playing a bigger role, though this still hasn't happened. The inspiration for Mr. Mushroom being how empty Cornifer's spot and fungal waste looked after he left, and the fact that Myla could potentially have a happy ending if the player chooses not to kill her. The 2018 discussion largely focused on this game's Switch port development, and plans Team Cherry had for the future, but also had an interesting bit of trivia relating to plans for the Forest of Bones area that was cut from the final game. Dark Blade Spy We've already seen that shit posters are everywhere in the Hollow Knight community, so why not add another one? Dark Blade Spy is a very small YouTube channel that features all the short-length Hollow Knight meme edits you can dream of. The videos are very loud and deep-fried, so don't say I didn't warn you. Pantheon of Hollow Nest, all bindings at once. Each pantheon allows you to select bindings that nerf a specific attribute of your character. Each binding's respective notch on the overworld will light up upon finishing a run with it on, which can then be used to unlock the Land of Storms as mentioned previously. I already expressed the difficulty in just completing the Pantheon of Hollow Nest normally, but the challenge of selecting all the bindings at once and completing the entire thing is a special kind of hell. I guess some people thought, man, this sucks. I just feel like I have too much health. I do too much damage, gotta cut that down, these charms are really annoying, let's just not use any of them. And stockpiling soul is useless. Just allow a teensy eensy bit. Good job, guys. Elegy for Hollow Nest Full Version Starting up a new save on Hollow Knight greets you with four lines in the intro cinematic. This is only part of the Elegy for Hollow Nest, otherwise known as the Ode to Hollow Nest. Found in the game's files is the rest of the poem, which reads, In wilds beyond they speak your name with reverence and regret, for none could tame our savage souls, yet you the challenge met. Under palest watch you taught, we changed, base instincts were redeemed. A world you gave to bug and beast as they had never dreamed. 
Our cherished dreams you granted and delivered more, but in dismay you found too late our desires had no end. What cost to tame our savagery? You gave your all and then gave more, yet desire still lay unquenched. More dreams remained, your energy. Amongst it spread a dreadful scourge that forced return our aggressive urge and turned us back to beasts or husks, our souls consumed to the light above. Within your corpse can still be heard the plaintive cries of one who took our pain and loss and dreams inside itself too. Through its pain, we found the truth that must now be confessed, for nothing can contain such things but perfect emptiness. I can definitely see why they cut this from the intro, as it's quite a lot to take in for an introduction, and pretty much spoils the entire plot of the game, but it's a neat poem regardless. Metroid references. Being one of the primary inspirations for this game, it makes sense that Hollow Knight pays homage to the granddaddy of its genre. One of the fallen corpses in Fog Canyon reads, Drained when Dream Nailed, which is potentially a nod to Samus's power armor draining when taking damage. Speaking of Fog Canyon, similarities can be drawn between the appearance of the various jellyfish enemies and that of the Metroid. The Umu boss fight even required its gelatinous shell to be smashed with a projectile, which aligns with the Metroid's resilience to weaker projectiles. Lastly, the fossil that holds the Shade Cloak upgrade is posed very similarly to the iconic Chozo statues. I'm sure there may be more subtle references I'm missing, but these were the major ones I could find. What truly happened to Higamol? Higamol was one of the five great knights of Hollow Nest, whose armor you end up fighting against in the first major boss battle against the False Knight. The one occupying the armor is a lowly maggot that was keen on defending its family. This leaves the location of Higamol himself currently unknown. We know both Zamer and Ogrim are alive from their in-game appearances, and it appears that Isma and Drya are both dead based on corpses that can be found, but Higamol is the only royal knight whose status cannot be determined due to his ambiguous appearance outside of his armor. Interestingly enough, Someone asked about this in Team Cherry's first AMA, to where they gave a vague answer that he could be alive, but didn't hint that it went one way or the other. We're really not sure if Higamol could survive without his shell, where he would camp out in his vulnerable state, or even if we unknowingly met him in the game. But concrete answers are gonna have to wait for now. Gruz Mother Room Statues. Hollow Knight's 2014 gameplay demonstration showcases the familiar Gruz Mother boss fight in a slightly different arena. In the background are statues of the Pale King, the White Lady, and a third undiscernibly broken statue, which could have been the Hollow Knight based on early sketches. These statues were replaced with a generic King's Idol that can be seen in the Gruz Mother's arena in the final game. Esme. Initially meeting Sly while he's dazed garners some peculiar dialogue that reads, Ah, Oro, you oaf. You wield your nail like a club. Esme, how much deeper do we have to go? It's later revealed that Oro is one of the three nail masters that Sly trained, but the name Esme never comes up again. Some theorize that this could be a secret fourth nail master that explains the garments on this corpse training dummy outside of Oro's hut, why Esme apparently disappeared, and why Sly or the nail masters never elaborate on Esme further is unknown. Forgotten Crossroads Beta Map the layout of Forgotten Crossroads seen in the beta build is similar to what we got in the final game, but features a few key differences outside of the fine-tuned details in how the paths and rooms are shaped. Namely, the Vengefly King fight initially took place in this area as opposed to Green Path in the final game. Even earlier builds of the game show hoppers and charged luma flies being encountered in the area, both of which are absent from the crossroads in the final game. Stizzle. 
This guy makes YouTube videos relating to Hollow Knight, and is also working on a Hollow Knight fan expansion called The Sanctuary. There's no release date for this project, but it looks promising, and he's currently looking for those experienced in Hollow Knight modding slash programming, so feel free to contact him if you're interested. This video is not sponsored by Stizzle, by the way. Green Path was bigger. In Hollow Knight's A Weird and Wonderful World trailer, green path looking areas with heavy foliage can be seen containing enemies that are only found in the final game's fungal waste area. This, in addition to the mushroom areas in this trailer, all sharing a similar shade of green to the supposed green path area, indicates that green path and fungal wastes could have been one big area at this point in development. Poggy Thorax this is a spirit NPC that can be found in a secret room located in the City of Tears Pleasure House. His dialogue reads, Skroink, you look pretty skinny, very scrawny, that's the way to be I reckon. Just look at me, a great big, juicy, fatty, oily, scrumptious bug. No wonder I'm so popular around here. I've been waiting an awfully long while. Surely it's dinner time soon? This pride held in being fat alongside the corpses littering the room potentially hints that he may have been a cannibal, and said corpses are all the bugs he planned to eat. Why he's dead now is unknown, but something tells me he may have got salmonella. Giant Spider Towards the end of Hollow Knight's A Weird and Wonderful World trailer, a clip shows four visible eyes of a giant spider-like creature in the distance. This enemy would not make it into the final game, and would be dubbed Giant Spider due to its lack of an official name. Blundering Oberlisk this was a centipede-like enemy that never made it into the final game. All we really know about the blundering obelisk comes from a snippet of its gameplay that can be seen in Hollow Knight's A Weird and Wonderful World trailer, and a short description from the Kickstarter, indicating that charging would be its exclusive form of attack. You could draw a comparison to the Moss Charger's form of attack, and infer that the Charger replaced the Oberlisk as a more aesthetically fitting variant of the concept for Green Path. This theory is supported by the Charger's absence from early trailers, but this is just speculation and could be pure coincidence. Young Elderbug slash Dream Diving. Dream Diving was a cut mechanic that allowed the player to use the Dream Nail to literally dive into the mind of NPCs. This trailer demonstrating the feature shows the knight entering Elderbug's mind, where a younger version of the Elderbug awaits in the Dream Realm. This feature was cut for unknown reasons, but likely because it would be a pain in the ass to program a Dream Dimension for every NPC, and going through a load screen for every NPC you want to dream nail just kills the flow more than reading a simple text box. Drya Cut Battle on December 22nd, 2014, Team Cherry announced via the Hollow Knight Kickstarter a new boss known as the White Knight. Here they provided an image matching the appearance of Great Knight Dryah in the final game, and a brief description of this boss. She was meant to guard an area known as the Queen's Glade, likely an early version of the Queen's Gardens, and would challenge the knight to a fair fight of nail and skill. The Kickstarter description also mentions she was driven mad by the loss of the queen. Since the queen is very much alive in the final game, this boss could have been cut due to not making contextual sense after a possible plot rework, if we assume the queen was originally supposed to be dead. Now Drya has been reduced to a corpse in the queen's gardens. Tuner Memory once the first three pantheons are completed, Dream Nailing the God Seeker in the Junk Pit has a 2% chance of transporting the player to a mysterious memory, rather than the typical destination God Home. The surrounding area in the memory greatly resembles Howling Cliffs, and the God Seeker herself can be seen here calling out to the gods. Interacting with the strange tuning device on the rightmost part of the screen triggers a message reading, Savage, Intruder, No Right Thou Hast to trespass within such sacred memory. Be gone! Be gone! The player is then booted out of the memory, and the chance of triggering this again is now set to 0%. I'm not sure why this is such a sensitive dream since we already heard the God Seeker ramble on about gods many times, but who knows what the knight could have walked in on. Hollow Knight Beta 
This refers to the beta build of the game sent out to Kickstarter backers in 2015. The beta was restricted to King's Pass, Dirtmouth, and Forgotten Crossroads, and contained cut features like backdashing, shorter nail range, alongside various other tweaks and differences. Hollow Knight's cut content in Silksong. Based on what can be seen in Silksong's current trailers, various features cut from Hollow Knight seem to be making some sort of comeback. Gameplay of an area covered in bones and lava strongly hints at a return of Hollow Knight's cut Forest of Bones area, or at least an area very similar to it making an appearance. Hornet can also be seen backdashing in a clip, which indicates that this feature seen in the Hollow Knight beta will be in incorporated into Hornet's moveset. Ant enemies planned for the Forest of Bones can also be seen briefly in the initial trailer, and with this just being based off a few minutes of gameplay, the final release will likely contain even more features cut from Hollow Knight. Which ending is actually canon? When regarding a game with multiple endings, fans are quick to speculate which ending is most intended to be experienced, or which ending is considered canon according to the game's universe. Team Cherry themselves stated that every ending in Hollow Knight was equally canon in their 2017 AMA. It's worth noting that this equally canon stance was taken before they planned to make a full-fledged sequel to Hollow Knight, so this opinion may have changed to connect the sequel to the original game, assuming Silksong isn't chronologically a prequel. If you ask me, Embrace the Void makes the most sense in this context because A, it requires the most work from the player and thus feels like a more complete ending, and B, the very end shows Hornet about to face some unidentified being, which could be seen as a sort of teaser to Hornet's story. Either way, devs overrule all that is canon, and the last time they spoke about endings, they said any were canon. Hollow Knight The Plague of Debauchery This is a fan-made NSFW visual novel that features Hollow Knight characters. The fact that I'm not even phased by this anymore is very concerning. Anyway, the most exposure I found this game getting was through Anonymous Shade streaming it two years ago. So watch that if you want the spicy bug stuff. A Weird and Wonderful World trailer. This two-minute trailer, released in 2014, showcased a wide variety of areas and enemies that would be encountered throughout the game. With this being a very early build of the game, I've already cited this trailer in reference to several cut features that could be seen here. Battle of the Black Worm. This is an event that is only brought up in White Defender's Hunter's Journal entry, and is barely touched upon even here. We can assume this must have been a major battle and involved the Five Great Knights, due to Ogrim's recollection of it. No other concrete information about the battle can be found. Grimchild attacks Millibel. We've already discussed on how Millibel is a lowly thief, but something far less known about this character is the unique interaction you get if you bring the Grimchild to her. Grimchild will actually begin attacking Millibel, indicating that it somehow knows she's running a scam, considering it doesn't attack any other non-hostile NPC. These attacks don't do anything to her as she cowers behind her stand, but it's an interaction that I bet most people people missed, as it's likely she's already scammed the player and moved locations by the time the player starts the Grim Troop quest. Areas Beyond the Abyss slash Abyss Expansion one of the Kickstarter stretch goals would have granted players an expansion to the Abyss if it was reached. This goal of $85,000 was not reached, however, so this content was never added into the game. All we can gather based on the Kickstarter description was that it was apparently going to be a massive expansion to the Abyss area, and would have included four new bosses. It's not clear what these bosses or areas would have been like, though we do have a sketch of a potential Abyss monster boss that would have taken place near the lighthouse. Early Sly Shop Items 
The Weird and Wonderful World trailer shows a clip of the player viewing items that could be bought off of Sly. Aside from the menu interface looking quite different to that in the final release, some of the items themselves would not be found in Sly's shop in the final game. The Greed Charm shown likely became the fragile Greed Charm sold by Leg Eater in the final game. The mysterious key item could have been a placeholder for the elegant key sold by Sly in the final game. The White Crystal Ring however doesn't seem to match any items seen in the final game, though the ring surrounding the knight earlier in the same trailer hints that this was the effect produced by the item that was ultimately cut. 2014 Gameplay Demonstration This was a demonstration of Hollow Knight's early gameplay that was uploaded December 4th, 2014. Previous analyses like the charged Luma flies in Forgotten Crossroads and the removed statues in the Gruz Mother Arena can be seen here. Additionally, the knight only has three masks of health in this demonstration, which is less than the five you start with in the final game, indicating it was going to be even more difficult. Backdashing this is a cut feature meant to serve as a way for the player to quickly dash away from danger in the opposite direction to where they were facing. It was a relatively simple maneuver and even made it into the beta with special spin animations if done consecutively, but it was ultimately cut from the final release as they claimed it killed the flow of combat and that they wanted to focus on making tight controls so that the player can dodge without relying on a single feature. Hollow Knight on PS Vita and Wii U. Hollow Knight's Kickstarter featured stretch goals for $50,000 and $75,000, which rewarded players with Wii U and PS Vita ports of the game respectively. The 50000 goal was reached, but due to the failure of the Wii U and the current rise of Nintendo's new Switch, Team Cherry decided just to port it to the newer, relevant hardware instead. There were also many difficulties getting Hollow Knight to run on Nintendo's hardware, so that definitely could have helped persuade their decision to delay the port until 2018 as a Switch release. The PS Vita goal was never reached, and I honestly couldn't imagine spending this much time working on a Vita port, or either of these ports for that matter, due to the highly foreseeable low sales numbers. Swimming, and the Weird and Wonderful World trailer strikes yet again, this time showing us cut gameplay of the knight swimming through some sort of acidic looking liquid substance. While you could swim on top of water and acid in the final game, you are never actually able to swim under the surface like what can be seen here. Team Barry this is the evil alter ego of Team Cherry that uploads fake Hollow Knight trailers on their YouTube channel. I said fake, but I didn't say it wasn't amazing. Legit Abyss Escape this is a Hollow Knight parkour challenge proposed by CC Mackay, meant to simulate how the knight canonically escaped the abyss. When the knight dream nails its reflection in the black egg, a memory is triggered of when the knight was just born, and a platforming section follows. The knight should not have the items it obtained throughout the course of the playthrough, like the monarch wings, during this earlier time period, but does likely for gameplay convenience. This run aims to only use abilities that the knight was assumed to have at its birth, and is very tricky as a result, though possible. I'll leave a link to the initial video in the description below, if you're curious about all the specific rules and explanations he proposed. Tyrant's Fist this is an early ground slamming ability that would later become the Desolate Dive spell. The only noticeable difference in the Tyrant's Fist is that the shockwave animation is a lot smaller, less flashy, and couldn't instantly burst through fragile ground, so I'd say it got a good upgrade in the final game. Zote's Daddy Issues The 52nd Precept of Zote reads as follows. Beware the jealousy of fathers. Fathers believe that because they created us, we must serve them and never exceed their capabilities. If you wish to forge your own path, you must vanquish your father, or simply abandon him. Make of that what you will. Record Bela. This is a hidden soul sanctum lore which reads, 
to manipulate a soul. Reformation of the mind must first occur. Few can bear such change. The path to true progress is littered with mistakes. It's not so much the lore itself that's interesting, as opposed to players' inability to even find the damn tablet. We only seem to know about Record Bela because of the game's files, as no one has been able to pinpoint where or if the tablet is physically located in the game. Higamol is Sly Theory. With the whereabouts of Higamol unknown throughout the entirety of Hollow Knight, it's only natural that people would begin to try to connect this mysterious identity to familiar faces. This post dating back five years connects what we know about Higamol to the all too familiar Sly. This post doesn't take itself super seriously as all of the evidence is very circumstantial, but it's definitely an interesting idea to throw around. I think what really knocks any of this theory's initial credibility is the sly boss fight that was added after this post was made. The post makes the argument that Sly owns a large sword in his basement, and thus it makes sense it would go with a big pair of armor. But this fight gave us a glimpse of Sly's fighting style, and I have a hard time believing armor would do anything but hinder him. He clearly uses his agility to his advantage and has no problem swinging around his giant weapon. Weapon. So yeah, I can't really see this being true with what we know now, but let me know what you guys think about this theory in the comments. Hornet's Get Good is actually Geg 2. No. Tiso Spencer slash Tiso's moveset. Tiso is an NPC designed by backer Tiso Spencer, who makes appearances throughout many areas of Hollow Nest. You can speak to him in each area to complete his mini-quest, which ends with him meeting an unfortunate end at the Coliseum of Fools. Unfortunately, or fortunately depending on how much you like this character, his death isn't at the cause of your sword as he is killed off screen and only confirmed dead when you find his corpse dumped in the kingdom's edge. Tiso's original concept art, however, suggests this may have not always been the case, and that Tiso may have initially been one of the knight's opponents. This art depicts a shield that he would have thrown like Captain America, and even a cloak for floating on wind currents which is completely absent from his final design. It's unknown why they scrapped this unique move set from the game entirely, and I always felt it was a missed opportunity. Death underscore nail. Your last chance to speak with Quirrell after completing his quest will be when he's resting at Blue Lake. He'll tell you he was glad he got to experience the sight of Hollow Nest once again, and that he finally feels at peace knowing that his duty to his master has been completed, sending the knight off with a final remark of fascination and admiration to the knight. Leaving the screen and returning only shows his nail planted where he once rested. The fate of Quirrell can be widely debated whether this bit of farewell meant he would accept death after this moment, or if he simply decided to give up adventuring and live out the rest of his days in peace. But one strong piece of evidence supporting the former theory is that the nail planted at the lake is named Quirrell underscore death underscore nail. Even if file names are just early placeholders, I find it intriguing that it wasn't named something more basic like lake underscore nail, or even just Quirrell underscore nail, or something along those lines. As much as it pains me to say it, we may have witnessed Quirrell's final moments, but at least we were by his side until the very end. Winged Life Seed. This is a cut version of the Life Seed enemy that would fly away from the player instead of crawling. All we have for this enemy is a simple animation. Other than that, we know very little about it or why it was removed. Though chasing down flying Life Seeds does sound like a pain in the ass, so maybe we should be glad they're gone. Where does Breda go after you beat Grey Prince Zoat? Repeatedly defeating Grey Prince Zote slowly brings Breda to her senses, as she realizes Zote isn't her true love. 
Her final diary entry remarks how she'll never find her lifelong companion just staying in one place, and that she must leave to seek what she desires. Beating Grey Prince Zote four times causes Breta to leave Zote's side in pursuit of this dream, and her destination is up for speculation. Her corpse doesn't appear anywhere in the world, indicating she at least left Hollow Nest, but how far she got remains a mystery. She could have made it to Farloom and maybe we'll see her again in Silk Song, but we'll just have to wait and see. Blue Lantern. This refers to an unused sprite depicting a, well, blue lantern. It's simply known as the Witch's Eye, and it's not clear whether this was an early version of the final game's Lumafly Lantern, meant to illuminate dark areas, or if it served a more sinister purpose based on the name. Maximum Geo Capacity the maximum geo capacity is 9,999,999. Every value stored needs a limit, and this happens to be it for Hollow Knight's geo storage. You'll never realistically approach this amount without hacking, so it seems Team Cherry didn't want this artificial limit to affect standard gameplay. Just carry what you won't cry about if you lose it, I guess. Ugly Jesus vs. Mummy. Before William Pellin started Team Cherry, he was out here still making masterpieces. Okay, Hollow Knight Iceberg, called off. I want to know more about the thought process behind this shit. What is... what does this mean? What, what is the idea behind this? Is this Silk Song 2 gameplay? The other locations besides Hollow Nest and Farloom. With Hollow Nest being the location Hollow Knight takes place in, and Farloom being the setting for the upcoming Silk Song, we have only vague ideas of what locations lie outside of these two kingdoms. It's possible that the Land of Storms could lie outside the bounds of these kingdoms, but your guesses for anything else are as good as mine. The mentions of outside Outsiders that visit Hollow Nest suggests that there may be other bug civilizations that exist outside the bounds of these kingdoms. Perhaps some resemble Hollow Nest back in its prime. Dirtmouth Fly NPC. Two images that were never deliberately made public depict a fly NPC bearing strong resemblance to a Gruzzer that is never seen in the final game. Both images are set in Dirtmouth, suggesting this would be where the NPC resided, but little else is known about this character. There is no hero or villain in Hollow Knight. It's easy to play through Hollow Knight for the first time and base your mentality on the Pale King being the good guy and the Radiance being the bad guy. Just doing a bit of digging into the lore reveals that neither of these characters were necessarily in the right throughout their conflict. The Radiance's very nature is to disconnect bugs from all thought and bring them to their savage roots, and while the Pale King aimed to keep bugs in their civilized state, the means to which he went to achieve this goal were extreme to say the least, signified by the all too familiar phrase, no cost too great. You can only breed so many kids and have them killed for the sole purpose of finding one to serve as a perfect hollow vessel to contain a kingdom-wide plague before you start to see blood on your hands. In the end, the hero and villain in Hollow Knight is all up to interpretation, thanks to the largely morally gray area that the character's actions occupy. The surface of Hollow Knight is also underground. Dirtmouth and the Howling Cliffs occupy the upper area of the map, and with the dark expansive backdrops present in these areas, it makes sense players would assume that this is just the night sky. Even further emphasized by the well you enter to reach the Forgotten Crossroads, which creates a strong visual divide between the subterranean layers and the supposed above ground. Well, what if I told you the above ground areas in Hollow Nest were never above ground to begin with? Likely only residing in a larger cave-like area, the fact that you never see the true sky in Hollow Knight explains why you never see any stars, and the constant time of day slash weather conditions that remain in these areas. Salubra's Early Voice 
A small clip of Salubra's voice, played in Hollow Knight's Beneath and Beyond trailer, reveals that it was initially much more feminine than her final voice. <laughs> <laughs> Generic underscore charm. Many unused charm sprites exist in the game's files that are simply given generic underscore charm as a name placeholder. A lot of these may have just been design concepts and not had an actual purpose yet, hence why they aren't named more specifically. Developer notes in the files. This one is pretty self-explanatory. All of these notes that were found in the files are listed on the wiki, and there's many interesting tidbits of consideration when Team Cherry was designing the world, such as the idea that time would never be referred to on a specific level to reinforce the static state of the world, or how certain words would be avoided in dialogue to keep the illusion of the world alive. Other notes explain key plot points and lore relating to characters within the game. Cut Minor Dialogues Various cut dialogues exist for multiple NPCs. A whole list of these can be found in the cut content section on the wiki, and there's too many to fully share here, but I'll highlight some of the more interesting ones. Cloth says, Wow, I want to be brave too. I'll save you later on, then die. You saved me. You're so strong and brave. I can't wait to die later on. White Lady says, Two halves of a whole, you found your way back to me? We were so unfair, weren't we? To cast you out, please, you must not hate him. He did what he thought was right. The kingdom had to live. Pure Vessel says, Do not think. Do not speak. Do not hope. Do not. Pale King says, False one, you cannot reach me here. As you can see, there's quite a lot here that gives slightly different perspectives on some of these characters from the final game. Grey City of Tears A gif of the City of Tears can be found on Hollow Knight's Kickstarter page that appears far more greyed out compared to the area in the final game. In general, I feel like a lot of the early Hollow Knight areas appeared more dull in color scheme, so it makes sense that the City of Tears blue palette came into being because every other area got more vibrant colors. And I personally think the blue was a nice choice for keeping the area dreary while giving it a distinct visual identity. Unused Unknown Item I really couldn't find anything specific about this entry due to the vagueness of it, but I feel it speaks for itself. I imagine this was data for an item found in the game's files that had no explicit purpose assigned to it. I couldn't find any sprites or specific proof of this item's existence though, so please let me know if I missed something. No Eyes Original Story while the Kickstarter backers generally had complete control over their characters' designs and backstories, so long as it was seen as fitting for the world of Hollow Nest, the backstory behind the warrior dream No Eyes was altered as Team Cherry deemed it too dark for the final game. The backer behind No Eyes, Lisa Kretschmar, made a post on Reddit explaining the original backstory. It goes as follows. She was away in battle when the infection hit. When she returned, everything was in disarray, but she wouldn't leave her children behind, so down she went to bring them to safety. They were already infected, swarmed, and attacked her. She couldn't bring herself to fight them, so she ripped out her eyes so she didn't have to watch them come at her. She was singing their lullaby as they killed her. No Eyes lore in the final game amounts to her tearing out her eyes and the eyes of other bugs as she believed it would protect them from succumbing to the plague if they couldn't see, which definitely still fits her creepy aesthetic and is disturbing in its own right, but isn't quite as messed up as what was planned for her lore. Sly's original voice actor. One thing you'll notice if you explore the Hollow Knight beta, among its myriad of other differences, is that Sly's voice is completely different. 
While Sly's voice actor in the final release is Hari Greg Demetrio, the identity behind Sly's beta voice remains unknown, as it has not been publicly credited based on what we know. The true meaning of Hollow Knight. As sort of a continuation on there being no hero or villain in Hollow Knight, the true meaning behind the game's story can also be interpreted in many different ways. Whether it's supposed to be a commentary on the downfall of a civilization, or representative of the lengths humans will go for self-preservation, I could really throw around ideas for this all day, so I'll keep this one short and let you guys take the discussion in the comments. Zot Charm. And finally, we have the Zot Charm. This is a charm concept shared by William Pellin in this Reddit comment before the game's initial release. Equipping the charm would have caused you to die in one hit, like the Calamity Ring in Dark Souls, but even more extreme. This charm was never brought in an update like hinted at in this post, but the Glass Soul mod for Hollow Knight essentially adds its functionality. So, here we have it. The end of this monster of an iceberg. Big props to you if you've made it all the way to the end. Even if you didn't, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for watching. This video was one hell of an undertaking and I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to correct me on anything in the comments below or share something I may have missed. Again, thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys later. Hollow Knight could have had a Meverse community.